Hi, Quantum Friends. I'm Quantum Theater's Executive Director, Stuart Urist, and thank you so much for tuning in tonight. It's my fourth season with Quantum Theater, so I'm pretty familiar with the tradition of the season announcement event, when we take you inside our imaginations and celebrate before the work's even begun. And there's always a lot to celebrate. Carla's fallen in love with certain plays. Wonderful folks have said, sure, you can make theater at our place. And great artists have signed on with us. Normally, they'd be all around you, raising a glass. And we know this year is a little different. We think of it as extra special. But we are together celebrating all that Quantum gives to Pittsburgh. We miss you. And we miss being together. But even though we can't clink glasses, we are together embracing that moment when slowly, carefully, and perhaps not quite how we planned, we get back to doing what we love. Now I'm here at the beautiful Shenley Park Ice Skating Rink because it's the site of one of our upcoming shows. We will make a new adaptation of Homer called An Odyssey. Now our board president, Carol King, is going to come to you live from another quantum location, and our fearless leader, Carla Boos, is at a third. We'll talk to you for about a half hour. I hope you made a cocktail for the occasion. You will hear from some of our artists and get a sneak peek at all of our shows, and we'll leave a little time for Q&A at the end. Now a lot of people are gonna tell you thank you tonight, but let me be the first. Thank you for your long support of Quantum Theater, for your support now, when it means so much to us. We will ask you to subscribe with some details of our three shows uncertain, but we ask for your faith in us, your environmental, highly innovative theater company that is using every ounce of its ingenuity to bring us back to that moment of live performance, safety and science allowing. Carol, are you there? I'm Carol King, president of the board. As Stuart said, I'm standing in front of the United Steelworkers building, a beautiful example of the architecture quantum loves and the kind of amazing places quantum takes us to. Thank you for taking the time to be with us tonight. We may not be in the same room, but we're sharing our love of live theater and of quantum. I want you to think with me, if you will, about that long history. I want to share my pride in us having gotten to this place through great times and tough times. The loyalty and support of friends like you has made that possible. So how are we? Our finances are strong. We've been able to maintain our staff. We've been able to plan shows, which Carla will tell you about in just a moment. And we're going to be all right, even if our plans need to be flexible. We're committed to these shows and have hopeful timeframes for them, but we are committed to them regardless. And we think the quantum, free from four walls, can bring us safely to see theater again, maybe sooner than others. Theater outdoors, in large spaces like the ice rink, seated with plenty of distance for a smaller number of people. We're committed to you and your safety every bit as much as to the shows. Please take this leap of faith with us. I'd like to acknowledge my fellow board members who give so much to Quantum and to the hardworking staff. You are amazing. And special thanks to all of our funders and sponsors who enable so much especially Bank of America, UPMC, and UPMC Health Plan, who have supported the entire season. They bring our work all over the city, into the neighborhoods, and are doing so much to make Pittsburgh a great place to live. Now Carla's going to tell us more from another great place and bring some of the season's artists into view. Hi, everyone. I'm here in a leafy, green, and very Pittsburgh place, Westinghouse Park. Thomas Boulevard there and the Homewood bus station. We're about a block off Penn, very near one of my favorite bars, the Evergreen, and one of my favorite arts organizations, the Frick. 
we are here because our season is meant to end here in Westinghouse Park. But I'd like to take you to the beginning. Let's go back to the Shenley Ice Rink. Long before the pandemic made us think about what is really important, some great artist friends suggested we look to the most ancient stories to the Greeks who first in the Western Hemisphere gathered us for collective experiences. And it felt so right for Quantum to make the Odyssey. Just for our moment, little did we know how right it would feel for our attempt to emerge together from a very strange time that we've shared. So the Shenley Ice Rink. The adaptation is by Jay Ball. It's an ancient, timeless story, but his take is very contemporary. It's funny, it's irreverent, it will cheer you up. He punches holes in our heroes, note my air quotes. He asks, will we ever learn how men and women should relate to each other? It has a fantastic cast, great designers, Narelle Sissons, Joe Pino, Mindy Eshelman, Todd Brown, and all this under the wise direction of Jed Allen Harris. It is meant to open in mid-August. I'm going to uh, introduce Narelle Sissons, the scenic designer. Narelle, can you tell people a little bit about the physical circumstances? Yes, Carla. The uh, audience will park up around Shenley Oval and come down to seating around the huge ice rink. Think benches for two, different levels, lots of room between them. The challenge for our team is to make sure that, that you can see and hear everything. Um, giving, we, we're giving it a larger than life quality, amplifying sound and visuals. It is the Odyssey, so large scale is appropriate. Um, and of course, we're in love with the nature which surrounds the space and helps give, give us the scale that we're after. We're trying to imagine a world where there is ocean, there is sea, there is expansive life around this production. It's exciting. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet, but we're excited about it. The show's got some music. Here's a snip of actress Catherine Gowell in the very first Zoom meeting of the actors singing Circe's Lullaby. And scratch the video. Next in the season is Chimerica by Lucy Kirkwood. It was meant to be right now. We could bear to postpone, but not cancel that important show. You know it's about the man, the Chinese man, who stood in front of the tanks in Tiananmen Square in 1989, and the American man who took his picture and you wanted to see it even before America's relationship with China took several more turns. The play is not about political posturing. It's about people. It's about how our stories are so intertwined. They can wrap around each other in a stranglehold of fear or an embrace of empathy. Call me an optimist. A cast of 12 stands ready. Six of them are Mandarin-speaking Chinese-American actors. We have the most wonderful space, which you saw. Our friends at the United Steelworkers Building have given us a 15,000 square foot entire floor. And we had an idea that seems prescient now. We would divide the audience. One half would see the American scenes live and the Chinese scenes via live feed video, and the other half the opposite. So two halves seeing the entire play, but divided in that way by a bank of elevators. It allows us to make socially distant seating for small audiences on both sides. That was the brilliant idea of my chief collaborator, Susan Su. I'm glad she's not here in this leafy green place with me to hear me say, that I think she is the greatest theater artist living and working in Pittsburgh. She'd be too modest to hear that. But I introduce her now to say a little bit about the show. 
Well, you know, the tank man has become an iconic symbol in the world of individual courage and ideals um, standing against a raging system that is much more powerful and capable of much greater destruction. So in that sense, it's a Daniel and the lion's den story. We have so many tank men in our world right now, represented by the Black Lives Matter movement, the Me Too movement, and the LGBTQIA movement. We have also become caught in a pattern of looking at the world from a viewpoint of polarities, Republicans versus Democrats, blacks versus whites, women versus men. And we have reasons for having gotten to this point. But I think that the danger in seeing the world in that way is that we miss the commonalities of what brings us together. And Chimerica does that. It looks at two powerful nations who don't understand each other. And the play doesn't answer all the questions, but it does lay our issues out on the table. I think that photojournalist Joe Schofield's search for whether or not the tank man is still alive is a search for validation and what truth and meaning look like. Finally, Let's transport ourselves to May, June, 2021. Dr. Fauci rules benevolently, and there is a vaccine in every clinic worldwide. We're gathered under a very large tent for socially distanced seating, in case we just find that plain fun, to see the world premiere of Michael Mitnick's The Current War. Quantum Theater is so pleased to turn Pittsburghers on to the 175th anniversary of George Westinghouse's birth through this play. Michael Mitnick is a former Pittsburgher who now moves in illustrious circles in Hollywood and New York, but he wrote this play at Yale. And the current war describes that war between Westinghouse and his rival Thomas Edison ingeniously and musically. Um, we are lucky to have two other great Pittsburghers, director Tomei Cousin and music director Doug Levine working on the show. And we will uh, show you a little bit of the very sweet turn of the century music, beautifully sung by Drew Lee Williams, and that's Doug, Ke Doug Levine at the keyboard. So imagine this space, if you will, at the turn of the last century, there is a large, magnificent house and Westinghouse's basement laboratory. And on any given night, you might see a tower of sparks or worse, flying in the air. After the music, Tomei will tell you a little bit about the show. I saw a boy tall as a pine On the walk home from St. John the Divine he tipped his hat, so I tipped mine. Ya -da 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 -da. I heard that boy say, replied, I'll walk you home, miss, if that be all right. I said, I won't put up a fight. He walked me home. <laughs> I got a boy a bustin' to see Crawl up the sky, sunshine down on me Soon as you rise, then there he'll be He's coming home to me We've been trying to work together for a while. I'm yes. so glad yeah. that we are now, <laughs> at last. Yeah. And I'm glad that you have taken on the, the helm of this interesting play about Pittsburgh. Can you tell me why you said yes? What excites you about the project? Uh, a, a couple of things. Uh, first of all, Quantum's work. I mean, I've always uh, really appreciated it and, and think I find it very unique and, and speaks um, to the, the, like I said, to the creative, um, organic uh, part of my life that I like, you know, so, so, so much. I, and it's rare that I get to do something that is so um, organic. That's the best word I can, you know, it's alive. It's really, really alive in a different creative process than just here's the book, here's the play, here's and go, you know. Yeah. Um, 
and, and kind of a set idea of what it has to look like and, and everything. So I, I really enjoy your work and, and the company's work. So that's the first part. And I've always wanted to be a part of that. So it's, it's great, it's a way in. Um, and then just the, the, the story itself is told so um, romantically informative, I guess. It's, a, it's got a, a, like a, a mixture of good romance, of love, of what I do, of what, not what I do, but what the characters do. You know, they, they are passionately in, involved in the creation of this, um, this new technology. You know, that's going to both, you know, both all the characters think it's going to change the world, which it did. Beautiful. Before we take some questions and reveal that we're totally zooming from our houses and we recorded this in advance so we could show off our locations. I just wanted to say that theater people will not be stopped one way or the other. We are going to keep on making theater. You know, when we were dreaming up these projects and we had to stop doing what we love, new ideas started to percolate. In fact, I'm standing here a safe distance from someone I hope you know, Andrew Smith, who performed The Gun Show two seasons ago. And Andrew, do you want to tell them about the work that you brought to Carla? Sure. <laughs> Hi, I'm an actor who is married to an actor, Lisa Velton Smith, who I hope you've had a chance to see in various shows around town. Uh, and it occurred to us it, that if we're quarantining together, we can talk to each other. We can get near each other. We can touch each other and do a lot of the other good stuff that makes theater really exciting. And so I figured while we're waiting for the time for it to be safe for all of us to be in the same room together, we might as well take the opportunity to streamline some theater uh, that takes advantage of couples or actors as couples. And so we brought this idea to Carla and she loved it. Uh, and a lot of Pittsburgh couples immediately jumped to mind who would be really great for it. And then Hank Bullington, the director of production for Quantum Theater, brought to the table Love and Information by Carol Churchill. And so that's what we did. Uh, we threw it all into Quantum's lap and we just went off running with it. Uh, so I hope you're able to see it. I hope you're able to enjoy it. Uh, please know that we have other ideas in the works in this vein and Quantum will keep you updated with everything that's, that's coming your way. Uh, and thank you Quantum audiences for always being so ready for an adventure.